Hello everybody, we've got some upgrades coming this week, some job upgrades and character quest twos. So these master ability twos are pretty powerful. Specifically one of them, Skahal, is insane. Like he becomes a meta unit, but the rest of them are pretty nice too. So we're gonna take a look at all of those. We'll take a look at the job changes as well, and we'll kind of see what's coming on Wednesday. Okay, so let's start by talking about Skahal. And if you didn't know, Skahal got a pretty good EX upgrade with some magic penetration, a super high chance counter, which is actually pretty good. And then, uh, we know, he's getting black mage job upgrades and a master ability too. And what happened in JP was he actually became meta. So we'll see what that actually looks like here. When we look at his master ability too, you can see that before he had the magic and the cast time down, but now he's gonna get that basic lightning party ability. Otherwise, though, he gets 10% agility, which, which works out to about 5 agility, and then 20 spirit penetration, which he did not have on his kit. So now you could get up to 40% with a weapon or 10 or 30% with a uh, trust master or so whatever you want to do. Uh, so the most important part, though, okay, is this courage. So this is the same type of courage that we saw with Catone. This is a really big deal because it means that as long as he is be, uh, above 70% HP, he's gonna survive damage. And that's so helpful uh, if you're able to, you know, pop him back up with Resnick or something and he's gonna get more healing because his faith is gonna be 97. So really what we're looking at here is a unit that can deal a ton of damage but now can actually survive. And if you have Halloween, rather you TMR, now we're just getting kind of silly at that point. So why else is he so good? Well, I mean, part of that, you know, are these black mage upgrades where we get, you know, magic attack up on the magic up level one. The fact that his upgraded counter is now a, uh, what is it, 50% chance to attack preemptively uh, attack a person and he can, you know, do some big damage there. And then we see things like his uh, Thundaga Disposer, whatever it is, um, is gonna have a huge, huge uh, lightning imperil. That's not new, but it's just, you know, really, uh, really big deal in a lightning team. The fact that it hits before damage and that he can cast it three times, but it's faster, right? So this is, this is a faster spell now uh, that Flare can break a magic barrier. So really he can deal with pretty much everything he needs to now except for maybe a really high spirit opponent because his spirit isn't you know uh, spirit penetration isn't massive uh, but he still he has it now so really he can deal damage through anything he can support the lightning team really well and if you forgot about it he also has the time age sub so it makes him really really interesting for live pvp but also very interesting for maps where he has time to actually set up this is not as easy a build as you would hope so just because of the fact that he's always moving forward. So it makes it difficult for him to actually buff uh, because he's always gonna be going towards the opponents and then he'll get them in range pretty quickly. So the second unit that we're gonna look at is Gargus. And when we take a look at his upgrades, they are not quite as good, unfortunately. So the big thing with him is that he also couldn't survive very well and they addressed it slightly by giving him the decreased chance of being targeted. Now this is very good, but still doesn't help him too much from AOE attacks, even though we got a bump of five AOE resistance up to 10% now, and he even got a magic boost as well. The cool thing about Gargus when you get his uh, upgraded weapon is that he has a, basically like almost no cast time now. It can't ever be instant, uh, but it gets it gets pretty close to being instant, like one or two ticks, which is very good. He gets a lot of spear penetration, but does not get magic attack resist penetration, and that still is a pretty big deal for him if you're coming up against magic tanks. However, he's going to benefit from the same job upgrades that Skahal did, so he can break magic barriers now. He has uh, AoE resist down on his uh, big AoE attack. Uh, so there's still lots of good stuff going on with him. He's going to be a, a decent damage dealer and will be a lot of fun to use in win teams. But I don't think it's like Skahal's upgrade. He's not going to be pushing you know, his way into guild battle teams. But he's certainly going to be a very, very useful PvE unit, uh, especially because of that AoE resist down. Uh, but also maybe some niche PvP as well. Next up is Lorella, who is a ranger type unit, and she was terrible at release, just totally garbage, was not useful, you couldn't put her in any team, 
now she looks pretty good. So we can kind of see what they gave her. She's an MR unit and the downside here is that she's 60 cost, which is a total bummer because the new uh, MR units we get are 50 cost. I don't know if it's possible for them on a master ability too to have cost reduction in there, but they should do it. Like, come on. Uh, but either way, what did she get? She was a critical hit, uh, critical hit rate unit already, uh, but they gave her more support for that. They gave her some innate missile attack resistance penetration, which is actually pretty good considering we have things like the, the diamond coat and, uh, you know, trust stones that can, you know, supplement that. She doesn't have defense penetration still, which is a big deal. However, she does have a lot more stuff to deal critical damage, uh, to raise her attack, uh, to have increased range. And when you look at her, her upgrades here, so this is, this isn't new, but her, her, yeah, upgrades to have critical damage up there uh, and then for her barrage to actually restore some AP on you and then now she has this increased range uh, it means that if there's a long enough map she could actually attack from pretty far back and her attack stat which was pitiful when she was not EX'd is kind of respectable for a ranged unit but not like outstanding in any way she's still slow she's still squishy uh, but she's just certainly more usable than she was before she's still no curry in my opinion because she doesn't have something like frostbite which is totally uh you know debilitating to an entire team uh but she's she's definitely kind of like uh, she's a lot more usable than she was Okay, and finally we have Mary Alley, who is a unit that actually sees a lot of play in limited guild battle, and I absolutely uh, hated coming up against her until I didn't, and that was the point when I like figured out how to beat those teams, but they're pretty tricky, uh, to be honest. So when we take a look at her upgrades, we can see she already had a lot of AoE resist. She had that increased chance of being targeted, but now she has some light party ability stuff, and she has... Uh, increased HP 30%. Now this is a big deal because her HP is really, really high. It's higher than King Mons. It's just like a hundred below Engelbert's. It's good for like, I think like seventh or sixth or something like that in JP. It's really high. And then she gets increased spirit 40% or 40 points. And that is removed after she gets hit three times. It's basically a three hit barrier, but it's worse because her three hit barrier can be penetrated. Uh, but it's also better because it can't be barrier broken. So, I mean, there's kind of a, a win and a loss there. Overall, it's a really good master ability. It means that she's gonna have a crazy high spirit and that is a really big deal. And if you don't really know why she's so good, part of it is the innate hate. Uh, part of it is that you can't debuff her spirit, the fact that she has magic resistance uh, and that she has, you know, an easy way to gain hate, uh, to raise her own spirit, etc. all this stuff. Uh, but then the other other part that's really good about her is that she has this arithmetician sub job and there's some cool things here you know for healing at the start of fights whatever it is uh, but what's really interesting is also that she has this like height two height three disable and that you know like for example I was going against her with evade and she can't hit any of my units so she just uses this and she straight up disabled my units now the team was already kind of hamstrung at that part uh, point so I was able to win anyway but it was still pretty crazy that she just disabled my units. Some people set her up to just go do that regardless if she can hit or not. She just is set up with a bunch of skills off so that she can go and height disabled people. I think that's pretty rad. But overall, she is a really good tank. The fact that she has innate hate uh, and now that she has massive HP means that she's still going to see a lot of play in limited guild battle. And if you have not EX'd her yet and you have, you know, Jaden, you have Fina, uh, you already have a decent uh, limited guild guild battle team right there. So the last thing we're going to talk about are the upgrades to the uh, uh, certain jobs. So Black Mage, Spellblade, Ninja, and Lancer. We can see what we got here. So we already talked about Flare has a uh, magic barrier break. We have Toad, uh, which is an increased chance of inflicting Toad, which is really great uh, for, you know, Mish in general or like specifically. Fire Aga or any of the Agas have an, an increased area uh, AOE now, and uh, they will also deal more damage, uh, which is 
which is fine. Uh, so same thing with Fyra is now going to deal more damage, which is great. Uh, and then Magic Up level one is now Black Mage Lore, which we saw with Skahal and with Gargus, that it gives them Magic Up and also Magic Attack Up. There's some other specific upgrades here that you can look through. The, the big one that I see is that Thundaga Disposer is uh, the large damage and then heightened cast speed and that Windlash, the same thing, is a small damage now for minimum and, uh, you know, has the 320 cast speed, which is going to be near instant for Gargus. And then also on Gargus, that his his Aerega uh, Disperser is large damage um, and even more damage to people that have area of effect down. So Spellblade, uh, the big thing here, uh, remove debuff from self, like that's fine on the, on the Firega Blade. What I really like is the magic barrier is huge now. So I need to actually look up what that is. Okay, so we can see on Mariala that the magic barrier is now uh, a 70% barrier. So that's a really big deal. Also that resist magic increases your spirit now and it has that range height increase to one. That was one of the most frustrating things when you were trying to AI tune a, a party and you couldn't get resist magic to go off because, and this is more of an early game problem uh, because it just had that range height of zero. And then there's some uh, an upgrade for Freyavia. Guaranteed he, hit is always good to see on a tank. Love to see it because you know the evade units come right to them. Uh, Ninja, so Ninja got, you know, okay upgrades. The only one that I really, 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 really like is, uh, well, two of them actually, is Utsemi, uh, which is now a two-turn buff. That's a massive upgrade. And then the Debilitator having a higher unit attack resistance debuff is a big deal. Uh, farms upgrade is also good to have some typed resistance. That's very specific. Uh, and then finally Lancer. Now Lancer is the one I'm most excited for because I love playing with King Elda. Uh, so to see that he got some upgrades here, the fact that they have a guaranteed hit now, which is a very, very strong uh, skill. The fact that they have this chance of inflicting slow is super powerful. Uh, obliterate, whatever. You know, that's not a big deal. But Nighthawk having that diamond, that was a big problem for, for Lancers. That seriously was. And then Elda, his really weird job level 25 skill that was, you know, pretty much useless. Uh, it now has a niche uh, effect of absorbing the damage he deals, but it's also very interesting because the AP consumption's down, so he's going to use it more often. And there's something that Orange A can read here about Eileen, uh, and then something that who knows who will read about Velna. So that's it for this preview video. I think uh, that on Wednesday, I'm going to be going and trying out Skahal right away. I might be trying some Gargus stuff too. If I have time, I'll, I'll do some sort of video about it. But otherwise, we'll see you all in a future video. Uh, and you know, for, for me personally, things are quite busy right now. We're in the final week of a semester and it's also the crunch time for my wrestling season as a coach. So I am a little bit busier these days, but as soon as those things kind of wrap up, I'm going to be very much uh, available to be making more content. So please look forward to that. And otherwise I will see you in the next video.